Every year, it feels like there's more shows that need to be kept on your radar. So many solid, episodic stories that it's literally impossible to keep up with all of it. Unless you're a guy like me, who's in a wheelchair and has nothing better to do than watch all the TV in the world. In which case, BRING IT ON! It truly is a golden age of television. And today, I'd like to talk about my personal favorites from 2019. Now, this list could have easily been 30 or 40 shows long, but I've done my best to narrow it down to a top 10. With 10 honorable mentions? Jesus Christ, I know, I know. But this is why I started the video like I did. There is so much good TV these days. And I feel like not mentioning these shows in at least some form is simply a disservice to you and the art form. So without further ado, get it on! Letterkenny is Canada's national treasure at this point, and it's for good reason. Consistently creative and hilarious, I have no idea how these good old boys and girls continuously find new ways to honor, satirize, and spoof Canadian culture, but they do. And as a Canadian myself, it's impossible to do anything but love it. Two incredibly solid and quotable seasons. If you haven't watched them yet, Give your balls a tug, you tit fucker! Damn, who would have guessed a couple years ago that everyone would be falling in love with the Star Wars universe again? Not because of a Skywalker, but because of a Mando and a Baby Yoda. Fun, funny, and filled to the rim with bounty hunter badassery. This show reminded me why Star Wars is such a fantastic universe to be a part of. A feat that the new trilogy absolutely failed to achieve. Two things are certain when it comes to The Witcher. Toss a coin to your Witcher will be stuck in your head. And Henry Cavill is Geralt. This beautiful man nerd deserves to be your new man crush. PlayStation or Xbox? PC. Is the chosen one. And even though the pacing and storytelling was a little hit or miss, The Witcher still leaves you wanting more, setting up a very promising second season. As someone who's only played the games, I can't wait to see what lies ahead for this one. It was really hard leaving this one out of my top 10, but that's how stiff the competition is these days. Legion was always one of my favorites, and it was incredibly sad to see it come to an end last year. Infinitely creative and cerebral, watching Legion was the equivalent of venturing through the mind of a drugged out schizophrenic god, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Here's hoping I can find the time to make a video dedicated to this one day. Equal parts hideous, heartwarming, and hilarious, End of the Fucking World was a black comedy wholly its own. I felt like there could have been one more story to tell here, but I guess the creator felt differently, and two seasons is all we're gonna get. This one came out right at the beginning of the year, and I don't think it received near enough attention because of it. Nailing angsty teenage dialogue is such a difficult thing to do, and sex education absolutely knocked it out of the park. One of the funniest and effortlessly relatable adolescent dramas I've seen in a long time. Brendan Fraser as Robot Man. That's literally all I should have to say. But if that's not enough, just watch the pilot. Seriously, just do it. Just go do it right now. It's so good. Promise. After an incredibly mediocre and disappointing season 2, I wouldn't be surprised if most decided against giving the third season a shot. I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice though, because True Detective Season 3 managed to be closer in quality and nature to its far superior and legendary freshman predecessor. A heartbreaking tale of memory, meaning, and of course murder made Wayne's True Detective journey one worth taking. This show aired with quite a polarizing atmosphere surrounding it. Some people loved it, some hated it, some think it's social justice warrior crap and others think it's a brilliant critique of social inequality altogether. I believe it was just pretty damn good television, with more than a few memorable episodes and moments. The Dr. Manhattan and Nostalgia Overdose episodes in particular were fantastic. I plan on making a video on this one very soon, because no matter what you believe, this show warrants discussion and attention. If I had one show on this list that could be classified as a guilty pleasure, it would have to be Warrior. I'm a sucker for well-orchestrated fight scenes and action, so whatever form I get it in is fine with me. It might not be the most brilliant, creative, or dramatic series ever, 
but goddammit is Warrior a fun and kick-ass way to turn your brain off for 50 minutes. Any Banshee fans out there definitely need to check this out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to separate the men from the boys. It's time to talk about the best of the best. The pick of the litter, the bee's knees, the cream of the crop. Would you get this show on the road already? Number 10, Veep. Let's be honest, Jonah's rise to the political ranks could have been the sole focus of the entire season and it still would have been absolutely hilarious. But seeing how the hands were inevitably dealt to each of our hated slash loved political stooges 24 years later was the proverbial shit cherry on top of this satirical clusterfuck of American politics. Getting to watch Selena go on one final awe-inspiring backstabbing spree in order to secure her nomination for the party leader was simply magnificent selling out her only real friend and manslave Gary to the FBI, the final burying of her longtime rival and lover Tom under a Me Too scandal, the permanent overturning of same-sex marriage as one final spit in her own daughter's face. And how could you forget Jonah Ryan as her veep? Fuck, it still makes me laugh just thinking about it. Selena had to destroy everything she was and had in order to become president. And in the end, her legacy couldn't even live up to the death of a cherished A-list celebrity. The final season of Veep was the most perfect and befitting conclusion this show deserved. Rest in peace, Selena Meyer. You will always be my most valuable Veep. Number nine, The Boys. I'm the type of person that prefers not to binge TV. I'd much rather have little glimpses of the characters and the narrative given to me over a long period of time. Because for one, it's something to look forward to every week. And two, it gives me a stronger sense of grandiosity and progression to the story being told. Well, within 10 minutes of watching The Boys, I was hooked and couldn't stop myself from watching all eight episodes in one sitting. One of the few times I've ever done so. I mean, what do you do when the love of your life is liquefied in front of your eyes by a seemingly apathetic quote unquote superhero. It's a gut punch of an opening and one that immediately communicates how twisted the world you're about to journey through is. Throw in a healthy dose of Carl Urban as your revenge mission mentor and Anthony Starr as a sociopathic Superman and you've got a recipe for one of the strongest seasons of television last year. Watching Homelander abandon an airplane of people after instigating their demise is something that will challenge the way you fundamentally view superheroes and anything that critiques the superhero zeitgeist we're currently living in with that much vitriol deserves to be praised and acknowledged. Number eight, The Expanse. Praise the Bezos and our Amazon overlords. Blessing upon us this immeasurable bounty. If any TV show from the past decade deserved to be saved, it was and would have to be The Expanse. It's a shame that not making enough money is a good enough reason to cancel one of your biggest and best hits. But I guess this isn't the first time sci-fi has prematurely cancelled one of its better achievements, and it probably won't be the last. It's better this way anyways. Amazon has the money and reach to elevate The Expanse into the upper echelons of TV prominence that it has always deserved. You notice the difference Amazon money makes right away too. The planet that Holden and the gang found themselves fighting for survival on, Illus, looked about as good as any multi-million dollar movie made today. The massive alien architecture that descended into bottomless labyrinths gave me that same mind-boggling feeling I had when venturing into the mines of Moria in the Fellowship of the Ring. Science fiction epics like The Expanse deserve to be saved. There isn't nearly enough stories like this being told with the proper amount of love and attention. We saved it, now do your duty and keep it alive. Number seven, Barry is a black comedy about a hitman. So it has the unenviable task of having to make you laugh and empathize with a man who kills for a living. And despite that incongruity, 
Barry executes that task with incredible precision. I've already made a video going in depth on Barry, so I won't linger here for very long. What I will say is this, the character of Barry is the personification of black comedy. He is the essence of what it means to laugh in the face of tragedy. Every pull of his trigger is heartbreaking as much as it is hilarious. And any show that illustrates this dichotomy with such finesse is one worth paying attention to. And that's without even mentioning the fact that Barry created one of the best fight scenes of the year. Yes, a black comedy did that. Just go watch Barry. Number six, The Deuce. For a show that was created by the same guys who made The Wire, I'm honestly baffled with how little attention this show received. My best guess is that people couldn't take James Franco playing twin brothers seriously. And to a certain extent, I can understand that. For how good of an actor James Franco is, it is really difficult to see past Franco as an everyman sometimes, let alone two of them. And one is a token douchebag that embellishes my preconceived image of Franco. Now, despite that more obvious point of contention, I still believe James Franco, Maggie Gyllenhaal, and everyone involved in this semi-fictional exploration of the 70s and 80s sex industry knocked it out of the park. That final walk through memory lane in the series finale was one of the most powerful and moving scenes of the year, and that alone was enough to place the deuce safely on this list. But then you have the tragedy of Laurie slash Sarah's character, the hope in Paul's final monologue, the triumph of Eileen slash Candy's life and career. The Deuce might not have been able to reach the dizzying heights of The Wire, but it was still a beautifully authentic recreation of a time and place that was anything but. There's not enough stories focused around authentic characters simply being, and although it might not be as exciting or flashy, as stuff like The Boys, I will never forget a show that delivered Vincent's last walk through the deuce. Number 5. Mindhunter David Fincher reenacting interviews with infamous serial killers. It's a license to print gold is what it is. That's gold, Jerry. Gold! I might even go out on a limb and say that Mindhunter is the best original in Netflix's arsenal. The second season was just as strong as its first, proving that this show was no fluke the first time around. Finally seeing Manson go toe to toe with Bill and Holden was a sight to behold. And having Bill's son spiral into his own psychopathy simultaneously was a flawless lesson in dramatic irony. Mindhunter captures the intriguing yet harrowing gaze into the void of criminality, more so than any documentary could ever hope to achieve. With Fincher at the helm of this psychological excavation, I see no sign of that vision ever being impaired. If you'd like a bit more on Mindhunter, check out my video focusing around atmosphere. Number 4. Billions. Billions is a fucking fantastic show, and it's been one of my personal favorites since it started 4 years ago. The fact that it's only placed at number 4 on my list should cement my previous sentiment. There is so much great television these days, and the bar for amazing stories like this is only being raised. Witnessing these two titans slowly corrupt and destroy everything around them in the hopes of taking down each other, while this goddess does everything in her power to stop or slow their self-destruction, makes for a rivalry that is as visceral as it is ingenious. I admit, it was unsettling and somewhat disheartening having Axe and Chuck be on the same side for a season. I'm of the opinion that the show works best when these two are locked in their world-shaking struggle for superiority over the other. But having all the pieces finally click together in that last episode, Chuck losing Wendy and being pushed past the point of no return, lord, it was like the calm before the storm that will be next season. And how about Axe's relationship shattering monologue to Rebecca? Goosebumps every time I watch it. It might not have been the best season of Billions for me, but even a weaker season of Billions is still one of the best seasons of television from 2019. Number 3. Yes, Chernobyl is only at number 3. I wouldn't be surprised if most disagreed with me on this one. In fact, I don't think I could argue with you if you did. 
I mean, as I'm writing and recording this, it just won the Golden Globe for Best Miniseries. So yeah, it was a masterpiece of a docudrama. It came out of nowhere and was something that nobody knew we needed until experiencing it for ourselves. I mean, we all hear about these disasters and know they happened, but our minds really aren't capable of comprehending the magnitude or severity of them. We need to experience it alongside the men and women who lived it. We needed to witness what happens to the human body once it's been exposed to an open reactor core. We needed to see how human ineptitude could cause a chain reaction that would have potentially led to the destruction of half of Europe and Russia. But we also needed to see how a handful of brave individuals were capable of sacrificing themselves once they knew what was at stake. Chernobyl was a five episode miniseries that reflected the best and worst parts of our species, and it accomplished that task by merely showing us the truth. Who would have guessed that a man cleaning off rubble from a rooftop would be one of the most intense and terrifying scenes of the year? I will never get the crackling of those radiation scanners out of my head. Number two, succession. If you haven't figured it out by now, I have a clear bias towards character driven dramas. Give me well written, fully realized characters and I'll watch them do anything and everything. Plot and premise is never quite as important to me, so it should come as no surprise why the family drama following the lives of the wealthy and powerful Logan family is my number two of 2019. The best way I can summarize my love of succession is like this. Each member of the Logan family could be the main character of their own show, and each one of those shows would be amazing. Each and every character's virtues and flaws are so eloquently communicated to the audience that you can't help but root for them when they win, sympathize with them when they lose, and pity them when they fail to rise above the ever-present judgment of their father. Succession is a show that connects you with a group of the most powerful, wealthy people on the planet, and instead of feeling hatred, jealousy, or envy for them, it makes you feel empathy. Succession reminds us that no matter how lucky you are or how rich you become, none of it means a damn thing without the respect and love of those you care about the most. It's the epitome of familial drama fueled by the most raw, intelligent, and creative dialogue. And I mean, come on, just look at that face. Look at that damn face. That final shot from season two told a better story than most other shows could ever dream of telling. Number one. Have you ever respected, admired, or resonated with something so greatly that you struggle to find the words that can accurately reflect the way you feel about it? Have you ever connected with a story, a character, an idea so profoundly that you felt as if that connection unearthed a revelation within you? A revelation that always yearned for a way to be revealed, but one that you were incapable of accepting until you had the means to do so? That's how Mr. Robot made me feel watching this final season and series finale. By the time the credits rolled on Elliot Alderson's Odyssey, I felt as though I had just experienced something that did much more than entertain me. It connected me with aspects of myself that I kept locked away and ignored. Thoughts that I was too terrified to face and accept. I would go into greater detail about Elliot Alderson about what makes him such an amazing character and why I feel the way I do about this story, but that would rob you of something that deserves to be confronted in your own way. What I will say is that watching Sam Esmail perfectly conclude his four season long epic was more akin to experiencing a modern classic than it was being entertained by a television show. And I know I'm sounding incredibly hyperbolic right now. I get it. I get it. Trust me. But that's how good I believe Mr. Robot is. 
The show cemented itself with the all-time greats. Breaking Bad, The Wire, Sopranos, whatever. Whatever you think of when you imagine the best of the best, Mr. Robot deserves to have its name be remembered alongside them. This is what long-form, episodic storytelling is all about. This is why TV is my favorite medium of storytelling. Mr. Robot isn't just the best season of television from 2019. Mr. Robot is a story that deserves to be remembered for all time.